Welcome back to the garden room here in Hopalong Hollow. We had been working on this room for about a month and getting it finished off, turning it into a garden room and a work area. I'm right now on the garden side of the room working, um, arranging some of the last flowers of the season and hopefully preserving them for just a little while. We've got Cosmos. This is a Daydream Cosmos. The Shasta daisies are blooming. We've still got butterfly bush. We've still got roses. We have got some dahlias. I think I'm going to put the dahlias over here. Don't like to take too many dahlias out of the garden, but certainly have to show a few of them in the house. So before I take you, so before I show you the other side of this working room, I'm going to show you the last corner that we had to restore in this room and what we did with it. So in this room, in this particular room, we only had one more corner to finish and that required that the walls be completely replaced and they were. But little did we know that not only that, but the floor over here had to be replaced because the joists were rotten underneath. So then we had to remove that piece of flooring and completely redo the bottom underneath the joists. This flooring is just plywood. It's just thick plywood, um, one inch plywood, because we don't need any fancy flooring in here. It's a garden room. The dogs come in and out. It goes right out into the courtyard and it gets pretty dirty in here. But one thing I did do last year is I had come in and stenciled the entire floor. So now I have to go back and do the same thing over here. I'll uh, just stencil this part, put some polyurethane on it, and it's good to go. So, so here we have the floor stenciled and ready to age. I'm going to do that with some walnut stain. I'm just going to take that color down a little bit. This is the paint, same paint that's on the wall. It just looks very, very different when you put it on the dark green. Look at the difference between the wall and the floor. If you want to refresh your course in stenciling a floor, just go to my video that I've linked below because I did most of this floor last year. I'm also going to stencil a piece of furniture today. So as soon as I age this floor and put down the polyurethane, we will be able to put the molding, the floor molding down here. Then we'll be able to move in a cupboard that belongs in this corner. And then I'm going to stencil that cupboard. Doing a lot of stenciling today in this video. Molding makes all the difference in the world. Now we can put in that cupboard.
I'm pretty pleased with how the cupboard turned out. This actually was a cupboard given to me by my friend Nancy, which was just a very ordinary, rather plain and drab cupboard that she painted red for me because she thought I would like to use it up in our barn to store tools and animal supplies and that sort of thing. But I thought it would be so much better in here to be used for storage in this room but I just wanted to do something else with it. The inspiration for my stencil for the red cupboard is the great William Morris. I am a huge fan of William Morris. He was born in 1834, and he was a designer of fabrics, stained glass, embroideries, tapestries, wallpaper, furniture. Just a wonderful array of fantastic works that he did, and he was actually the founder of the arts and crafts movement of the time. This is one of the most popular patterns that you may recognize. This is called the Strawberry Thief. It's still being printed today as wallpaper and fabric. And I just happen to have the fabric of the Strawberry Thief right here. And it's the fabric that I used on the skirting in on both of my long art tables in here. So I wanted to pick up on this theme without getting too elaborate because it is a stencil and stencils need to be a little more simple than this. But this was my inspiration to make the stencil. I just wanted to pick up on these colors and the theme of the birds, the vines, and the flowers. So here you can see on one of the tables the table skirting, the William Morris Strawberry Thief pattern on that beautiful rich red background.
So by simplifying the design in the stencil, I was able to pick up some of those same colors, the same motifs, and I think it turned out really, really well for this room. could pass as a Pennsylvania Dutch design, Pennsylvania German folk art design. It also looks a little bit Scandinavian, but actually the inspiration for it was William Morris. So I think it looks great in this room, looks great in this corner, and let me show you what it stores. Since this garden room is a multi-purpose room for all sorts of reasons, one of the things that I love about this cupboard is it has so much storage in it. And because we often fill orders in this room, this is where I can fill my book orders. So these are shelves just containing packing materials, some of my books, greeting cards, envelopes, tape, the whole bit. So I'm really glad my friend Nancy gave me this cupboard and I'm glad I didn't put it in the barn. It's perfect for this room. It's perfect for this corner. From the vantage point of this red cupboard here in the corner, you can get an idea of the simple layout of the room. It's just a rectangular room. It's not even that, that large, but there's so much light in here. It's just wonderful. And so along this window, I'm able to do the gardening things. And then along that window in the back is so beautiful for the light coming through the natural light coming through that window and that's great for painting and drawing and then over here against this wall i keep a lot of needlework supplies with needle um, felting wool and even some of my critters are on these shelves so i do have my workshop upstairs but I tend to be the kind of person that just works all over the house, so I'm glad to have this room too, especially in the winter. Oh, this is what I love about the room. It's just the sun streaming through this window. The light in here is so great. Now that this room is insulated, I'll be able to work in here in the winter, whereas before I couldn't do that. It was just too cold. My studio is way too cold upstairs, so this is going to be just perfect this section of the room. It's just so happy here. I love it. It's got so much cheerful light. I'm able to look out the window and see the gardens and I could just sit here all day long and paint. Since this room is now insulated, I'll be able to stay warm in the winter and I can finish up, maybe I can finish up the illustrations for my garden book that I've been working on for such a long time. This is one of my little characters in one of the books that I've been working on. And look at her, she's actually in her garden room and she's painting seed packets. This is also a great table to stitch. So if I need to make a costume for one of my felted critters, I have under the table my very handy little featherweight singer. I can set it right on the table and remove the paint supplies. Now, I love my upstairs workshop, but the light in there is just not very good. And I have to work under a lot of artificial light. So I keep all the same sort of supplies down here. And I think this is gonna be some place where I'll spend a lot of the time in the winter. And I even actually thought of maybe doing some video of working on some of these art pieces. You have to think outside the box when displaying a piece or using a piece of furniture if it doesn't quite fit, such as this trunk here, which actually is not supposed to be sitting like this, but it would not fit horizontally without crowding the room. And so in order to put it to use, I set it on its side like this. I can still open the door. There are supplies inside of it. And then I'm still able to use the top to store my dyed wool. All over the room. If I want a needle felt in the other room, I just can come in here. It's right outside that door and grab a handful of wool and work on the couch or 
I can sit down on this comfortable little love seat that was in the shop and I moved it in here. It's a cozy little seat. We made this out of an antique bed. I see we have a visitor, a little daddy long legs. Here's the light fixture that I want to have in the center of the room. It just hasn't been put up yet. So I'm going to use this shelf, this particular shelf, as a display area for some of my items that are for sale. We often have people that come over to purchase things, and since my little shop across the way is so tiny, there's a lot more room in here. I think this would be a great place to use as sort of a something of a little showroom. So this corner is dedicated to the critters. I love this little green cupboard here. And it, we used to take this to shows as part of our display, but it's a little awkward to carry around in bins and so on and so forth. So I decided to leave it in here as a display piece in this room. And it should be filled with mice, but we're down to only three mice. Once I get my mouse population back up, I can even put them inside the cupboards, peeking out. So that's something we'll be doing this winter, getting, getting my inventory back up. So this is the door that leads directly to the keeping room in the kitchen. And I'm rounding the corner again, and this is the old cellar's cabinet that I have had in so many places. I've had it on the porch, in the barn, in the potting shed. I've had it everywhere. It's been served many purposes. This cabinet is that it stores things that you would rather have hidden from sight, such as small tools. And here we have another supply of garden books. Oops. Oh, <laughs> this little gourd lady, I bought her in 1992 and the artist was Karen Spencer. Karen Spencer, wherever you are, I still have this little garden gourd lady, and I still love her. Last of my paper gardens. I haven't made these in a long time. I might make some over the winter. I have so many plans for winter videos, because when you can't be out in the garden, you have to think of something else to film. It's an enamel top. On the cellars, the enamel top on the cellars cabinet is so great for processing fruit and so on. As you might remember, when I made the apple pie, this is where I peeled my apples. I've got two great, great apple peelers here. I've got about 500 pairs. I've still got to peel and freeze. So, one of the lovely people sent me this wonderful soap, but it looks so pretty in the packages, Lisa that I just don't want to open it up, at least not yet. Yeah, it smells great. Looks really good next to these dried flowers, too. So why am I walking around the room showing you all these bits and pieces and bits and bobs? Because they're useful items that are actually working items, but they're put to use as display as well. So on this funky old cupboard, Everything is either pleasing to the eye that is showing or useful as a tool. So there isn't much left to do in this room. Um, we still have to put up the light. And then there's one more really horrible eyesore that I'm going to show you right now. And that's the door. And it's really bad. This is the door leading to the garden room right off the courtyard and next to the cold frame. And it doesn't look like it's too bad of a door. It's just missing a pane of glass. But if you travel down the door, you'll see that it's quite ugly. Uh, that's because we had to make a really quick doggy door when we got our Great Pyrenees, and we never changed it out. And that's because this was just a mudroom back then. It really wasn't that important for it to be a beautiful door. But now that we've turned this into a garden room, my husband is moving the doggy door. He's going to put a nice doggy door in another part of the house. And we're going to switch out this door with one of the seven door, antique doors up in the barn. And I think we do have a French door up there in its entirety. 
So I think it'll still be a French door. It just won't be this one. Thank goodness. Going to end the day with a soup that matches the little red cupboard. Roasted red pepper soup. This really healthy and yummy soup is great for a light dinner. So I'd serve this with maybe a hearty bread, whole wheat bread. And you can really taste the roasted peppers in this. It's very, very good. I also browned the butter. Um, that's not necessary, but I wanted that extra little bit of a nutty taste for the soup. Our tea for the day is an herbal tea because it's actually the end of the day and we don't want to stay up late because this is caffeine free. We've had it before. African Autumn by Harney and Sons. It's herbal red bush with cranberry and orange. For myself, I like strong tea and coffee. So herbal tea is not really one of my favorites with the exception of this because it has a lot stronger taste than most herbal teas. And what you can really taste in this is the orange and the cranberry. So, from Hopalong Hollow, a lovely end to the day with a nice bowl of red pepper soup and some herbal tea. From Hopalong Hollow, this is Jerry. I'll see you next time. I nearly forgot to mention the dishware. This is Lennox Winter Greetings, but I use it all year long because it's so beautiful and cheerful. And also, I have to tell you, this soup is some of the best I've ever made. If you love creamy bisque-type soups, this is the one for you. And you know what? It's very rich, and you can really taste that browned butter in here and that roasted pepper. It's very rich tasting. It is absolutely delicious. If you don't try any of my other soups, try this one. Okay, I'll see you next time.